grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Let us pray. O God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have made. From the dust of the earth you have formed us, and from the dust of death you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts, and put within us a new spirit, that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to hear these words from the Old Testament, Joel chapter 2, verses 12 through 17. I'm reading from the Common English Bible. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your hearts, with fasting, with weeping, and with sorrow. Tear your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, very patient, full of faithful love, and ready to forgive. Who knows whether he will have a change of heart and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the horn in Zion, demand a fast, request a special assembly, Gather the people, prepare a holy meeting, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the groom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the Lord's ministers, weep. Let them say, have mercy, Lord, on your people, and don't make your inheritance a disgrace, an example of failure among the nations. An example of failure among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? And then from 
the Apostle Paul reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through uh, chapter 5, uh, or 6 rather, verse 2. So then, if anyone is in Christ, that person is part of the new creation. The old things have gone away, and look, new things have arrived. All of these new things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and who gives us the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, God was reconciling the world to himself through Christ not by not counting people's sins against them. He has trusted us with this message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors who represent Christ. God is negotiating with you through us. We beg you as Christ's representatives, be reconciled to God. God caused the one who didn't know sin to be sin for our sake, so that through him we could become the righteousness of God. Since we work together with him, we are also begging you not to receive the grace of God in vain. He says, I listened to you at the right time, and I helped you on the day of salvation. Look, now is the right time. Look, now is the day of salvation. And then our gospel reading from the gospel of Matthew. Hear now these words from verses 1 through 6 and 16 through 21. Be careful that you don't practice your religion in front of people to draw their attention. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Whenever you give to the poor, don't blow your trumpet as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may give praise from people. I assure you that's the only reward they'll get. But when you give to the poor, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that you may give to the poor in secret. Your Father, who sees what you do in secret, will reward you. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. They love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners, so that people will see them. I assure you, that's the only reward they'll get. But when you pray, go to your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is present in that secret place. Your Father who sees what you do in secret will reward you. And when you fast, don't put on a sad face like the hypocrites. They distort their faces so people will know they are fasting. I assure you that they have their reward. When you fast, brush your hair and wash your face. Then you won't look like you are fasting to people, but only to your Father who is present in that secret place. Your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Stop collecting treasures for your own benefit on earth, where moth and rust eat them and where thieves break in and steal them. Instead, collect treasures for yourselves in heaven, where moth and rust don't eat them, and where thieves don't break in and steal them. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the good news for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, today is Ash Wednesday, and um, our plans kind of fell through this morning. We were going to do the Ash Dash, and uh, we've got Linton bags to hand out to those who would like them, and and uh, I'm going to let that be a mystery, a surprise for you. Uh, you can you can Google Linton bags and get an idea of what we will place in the bags. Uh, but today was going to be a special day where folks come by and and impose the ashes on themselves. And so we would have already done that today, and this portion of the service would have been modified uh, for some. Uh, but here we are, and wherever you are right now, um, if you've got ashes, great. Uh, I sent an email out yesterday uh, with a few little instructions. I hope you haven't mixed your ashes with water. I learned the hard way that 
Uh, the suffering of Lent uh, is intensified when you mix ashes with water. It causes a caustic reaction, and when you apply the ashes on your forehead that have been mixed with water, uh, you will burn yourself. And so uh, I learned that the hard way my first year in ministry uh, when I was told, prepare the ashes for our Ash Wednesday service, and I mixed the ashes with water. And several church members later complained about the burning sensation on their foreheads. So uh, if you have ashes, mix those ashes with a little oil. Uh, that was the instruction I provided yesterday in our email that went out. Uh, or if you don't have any oil to mix your ashes with, uh, simply take the dry ashes and you can make your the cross, sign of the cross on your forehead when we come to that place in this service. If you don't have any ashes, that's okay. Uh, simply make the sign of the cross on your forehead if you choose to do so uh, when we get to that time in this service. Really, Ash Wednesday is a wonderful service that I look forward to every year. It's a, it's a very um, uh, typically a serious service where we come together and we think about uh, our mortality. We're reminded um, through scripture readings, often the sermon has to do with, with that theme. And, and obviously when we impose ashes, you're given a reminder then that from dust you come and to dust you shall return. And it is the kickoff of this season of Lent, uh, this season of sacrifice and and fasting and prayer and, and truly opening our hearts up and our lives up to God's will and repenting of our sins and, and, and really preparing ourselves uh, over the next 40 days, not including Sundays, which are like a little Easter, little Easter's. Uh, we are preparing ourselves uh, for the resurrection of Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, that that beautiful Easter morning when, when uh, we celebrate uh, the risen Christ. And so it's a beautiful service. It's, it's one of my favorite seasons um, in the Christian year. And it's, it's a time when we can really focus on, on doing what we need to do to take care of ourselves spiritually. And I believe so often we overlook that. I know I'm guilty of it. Um, I have shared with you all and with others, uh, friends, that I'm doing a Facebook fast right now, a social media fast, and uh, I came to a place where uh, I was just being drawn in every day, and, and honestly, uh, I needed a break, and uh, I needed to refocus and to uh, to shift my focus away from things that can often be distractions and, and to turn the focus back on my soul. And one of the questions we ask in Wesley small groups, Wesley and small groups, is how is it with your soul? That's really the question. How is it with your soul? Uh, I was just invited by a pastor friend to be a part of a Wesleyan Covenant group, a group of uh, right now there are about four or five of us in the group and uh, we simply meet once a week and we check in and we talk about where we have seen God working in our lives uh, the previous week, where we saw God working. And really to answer the question, how is it with your soul? And so on this Ash Wednesday, I'm asking you, wherever you are, Whatever you've got going on right now, how is it with your soul? And my challenge for you and the challenge for me as well is to take this season of Lent and to truly prepare ourselves to truly repent of the sinfulness in our own lives, the, the many times that we fail God. I don't know about you, but that can keep me busy for a while. 
praying and asking God to continue working in my heart and in my life and to continue transforming me and shaping me and molding me. And in this season of dying, it's a good reminder that sometimes I need to die to myself. And so I encourage you to spend some time in prayer uh, seeking God over the next 40 days throughout this season of Lent. Really dig down and spend time seeking God in prayer. Double down in your commitment to search the scriptures and, and to invite the Holy Spirit to speak to you through the word of God. I encourage you to fellowship with others. It may be through a Zoom meeting. I believe we're going to be back in the sanctuaries very soon. And so I encourage you when the doors open, if you feel safe, to come and to be a part of community worship. And if you can't be here in person, join us online because we will continue offering online worship experiences from here on out indefinitely. But be a part of the community. When we celebrate the Lord's Supper in this season of Lent, which we will do here in just a couple weeks, in the first Sunday of March, I encourage you to come to the table with an open heart and an open mind expecting to experience God's grace. Over the next several days in this season of Lent, I encourage you to pick up the phone and to call those who you know are sick or alone. Check on them. Talk to them. Visit with them. Let them know that you're thinking of them and praying for them. Pray with them. These are just simple ways that we can empty ourselves of ourselves and allow God to move in and to do that work of restoring and renewing in us this faith that we claim. It's, it's really easy as people of faith to get caught up in the motions, to go to church, to put on your best clothes for church, and to act a certain way because people know you go to church and you're a part of a faith community. To say things, certain things or to not say certain things because of who you identify as, as a follower of Jesus. I encourage you and, and it is a challenge for myself to go even deeper than that to not get caught up in the routine of just being a Christian by name only, but to really go deep in faith and to truly seek God and, and to humbly approach God, asking for God to come in and to transform and to continue doing the work that God has been doing in our lives since our baptism. And so that is my prayer for you today and on this Ash Wednesday. And I commit to doing that myself, to taking more time each day, to commit to growing in my faith, to growing in my trust in God, to being more aware of those areas where I am failing God in my attitudes, in my actions in the things that I do, in the words that I speak, in the things that I don't do, in the words that I don't speak. And so it really is a season of examination. And so my prayer is that God would truly examine us tonight and over the next several weeks as we journey to the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now for our invitation to observance of the Lenten discipline. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. 
And it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer and fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature let us now bow before our Creator and Redeemer. Would you pray with me in a moment of silence? I invite you now to hear these words from Psalm 51, verses 1 through 17 taken from our United Methodist Hymnals, number 785. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was born into iniquity, and I have been sinful since my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from death, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. And now let us offer a prayer of thanksgiving over the ashes. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now if you have ashes at home, I invite you to go ahead and impose the ashes on your forehead or again, you may just simply make the sign of the cross on your forehead. Let us pray. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may be light in all your will and walk in ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And now join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Lord Who Throughout These 40 Days. It's number 269 in our United Methodist hymnals. You're welcome to just listen to the beautiful instrumental version of this hymn, uh, which is being played by Patty Comerford. Patty has uh, recorded the hymns, all three hymns that you are hearing tonight. So we are so grateful for Patty. Lord Who Throughout These 40 Days you don't have the lyrics available I encourage you to look up those lyrics and may that be a prayer for you uh, as a part of your Lent journey
Thank you for joining us for this time of worship on this Ash Wednesday. It's, it's cold outside. It's snowy. Uh, the roads are terrible. Uh, I pray you're warm and safe wherever you are and that you have all that you need as far as food and water and, and all those important things. Um, you know, Lent, I'm not going to preach again, but I do want to share this. The season of Lent is really a season of sacrifice. We're reminded of the sacrifice Christ made for us. Been in conversation with uh, one of the kids in our youth group about idols, and and uh, really that's that's really where we are, isn't it? I mean, when we when we really think about our walk with Christ, and especially in this season of Lent, when we're reminded. Um, of the need to sacrifice. What idols do we have in our lives? And what do we need to give up and to let go of that would allow us to focus more on walking with Christ, especially now on this journey to the cross? I want to share this poem with you. Uh, the text was written by Tom Connery. It was modified by Dennis Bratcher. Um, the title is Ashes. Uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful piece about Ash Wednesday. We rise again from ashes, from the good we failed to do. We rise again from ashes to let you make us new. If all our world is ashes, then must our lives be true. An offering of ashes, an offering to you. We offer you our failures. We offer you attempts. The gifts not fully given, the dreams not fully dreamt. Give our stumblings direction. Give our visions wider view. An offering of ashes, an offering to you. Then rise again from ashes. Let healing come to pain. Though spring has turned to winter, and sunshine turn to rain. The rain we'll use for growing and create the world anew from an offering of ashes, an offering to you. Go in peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.